Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God is good. And all the time. God is good. Amen. 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 We've had a great time this week. And I believe you're going to be blessed this Sunday morning. We bring, uh, we bring greetings from uh, Kampala, Uganda. From my wife, Jessica. And our entire family of the tabernacle have been sent here to be a blessing to you. Is that all right? Uh, is that all right? Amen, amen. Amen. I only carry the blessing of God. Amen. You guys are too serious this Sunday morning. Can you smile for a minute? Look at your neighbor, say, you look beautiful when you smile. You look... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this morning, the Lord is stirring in me an apostolic word. And I don't know whether you understand what an apostolic word is. But it is usually a word that provokes and shifts. Anybody ready to shift? Any, anybody ready to shift? So I need you to find somewhere to write and listen because I want to do an apostolic teaching this morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I was, thank you Jesus, we're going to do a great job, amen. Yes. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Amen. My assignment really is to build the body of Christ. But we can't build a body outside the understanding of how God builds a body. So today I want to talk about the building of a spiritual house. The building of a spiritual house. I'm still looking for you. The building of a spiritual house. And if God can allow us to share this word tonight, I'm telling you this church is going to a whole different place in Jesus' mighty name. The things God is going to do through this house is great and it will bring about a great change in our country, Burundi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Men will run here because of what we are building. The building of a spiritual house. First of all, I must say that the enemy knows better than man what God is building. And the enemy attacks according to the plan of God. He understands the plan before he releases the attack. And he does understand that God is building a house. Are you still in this place? And each one of you that is here is a house that God is building. Oh, you have to help me here. Each one of you is a house that Jesus is building. Now, this is the trick of the enemy. He causes us to focus on ourselves rather than on what God is doing. So most of us have prayer lives 
that are targeted to what we want rather than prayer lives that are targeted to what God is building. Benshi iyo dusenga iyo tumana imyanya mu masengesho twitwararika cyane cyane ibyo dukeneye gusumba gushaka kumenya iki mani kirakora. And the reason why you don't feel God is because you have not yet become a partner with God. Igituma rero utumva Imana utumvume guri kurasabana nayo nuko mutaranywana utarashaka gukorana nayo. The anointing is not about making us anointed but it's about us being able to partner with God in what he's doing. Amavuta sayo kugira twebwe tuba basizwe ariko ni kugira ngo ducike abasosiye ni Imana mu vyirikirakora. Many times we are like the children of Israel who God is taking to Canaan but they're asking him for food. Hey, tumeze cyane nk'abanyisirayeli uhora reka twarika nane ariko bo bakitwararika gusa bindiya They forget that their shoes are growing with their legs bakibagira ko ibirato bari bambaye byagenda bikura nko kibirenge byabo bikura Because God is more interested in your movement than in your appetite Koko Imana yo itwararika cyane cyane inambuko zawe gusumba inzara ufise uh, okay. Are we together somebody here? So the Lord is doing a work and he asks he asks a man to be a part of what he's doing. Now spiritual understanding is the key to spiritual success. God hears us according to what he's doing in and through us. Imana sorry God hears us according to what he's doing in and through us Imana itumva bivanye nikire ko ikirakora indani muri twebwe no muri twebwe Every time the Lord will send a man or create a man he will plant a garden first and then put a man to keep and tend that garden Ge chose Imana izorema umwana w'umuntu izoshiraho nitongo kugira ngo wa muntu aze arongore cyane agaze iyo tongo The enemy will always point you to the appetites that the garden provides rather than the assignment for which you are in that garden Satani rero akacyashaka ngo witwareke kurusha appetit yo gushaka kujya ibiri muri iyo tongo gusumba ihamagaga and what has happened over time is that church has become institutional rather than revelational. But you must understand that everything natural is a reflection of something spiritual. How many are still with me here? I'm building something. Are you here now? Everything your eye can see represents something your eye cannot see. Now many of the mysteries that are in the world can only be understood by what we call spiritual understanding. So today I'm revealing only one of the many mysteries. Which we are calling the building of a spiritual house. How many people are ready for today? Are you ready for today? The building of a spiritual house. Let me start this way. From the Old Testament, right up to the New Testament, the agenda of God is always to build. The blessing of God is always about the building of God. God is not a blesser. God is a builder. And he relates with man according to what he is building. What we call the making of man in Genesis 1 is really the building of a body in whom he would breathe his breath. God was not just making a creature God was making a habitation Lord help me now here today God was not just making a man that could drive cars and build houses God was building a habitation He wanted to reside 
He wanted to preside. He wanted to have a habitation. And there is no other reason why man was made apart from the express function that he might be a habitation of God. So after he made man, he breathed into him the breath of life. And the Bible says he became a living soul. Watch this now. When man fell, he did not lose the image but he lost the function let me try this again he did not lose the image because he had already been made a house and God had already breathed into this man but now when he lost function he began to use soul soul to live rather than spirit to function. So now Adam begins to run after things. He begins to run after people. He begins to try and build houses. You remember the Tower of Babel. They are trying to reach up to God. The Bible says, and then in the days of Enos. Men began to seek God. Do you hear me? Men began to seek God. Now to seek God means you're not seeking for a God who is lost somewhere. But that emptiness was an emptiness of function. That yes, I have the image but I have lost the meaning. So I am looking for God because he carries the meaning of this body. If I don't find God, I will not find meaning. So let's now build because on the inside it's always about building. That's why your most, these are your desires. You want to build a house. You want to build a family. You want to build a future. You want to build a country. Because you are like God. That the thing that makes you most excited. Is not what you get. But what you build. Your heart. Always wants to build. And it is the people who build that are the richest in our world. Invention is about building. I might talk it to somebody here. You're seated here. But in your mind, you're always building something. You're building something because you're made in the image of a builder. And you will not stop. I can't hear anybody. You will not stop until you see what you have built. But understand <laughs> that your hunger in the natural is a reflection reflection of God's hunger in the spirit. God is a builder. The enemy is a breaker and a destroyer. The enemy is a divider. But God is a builder. I can know that you have God by how much you are building. I can know how much you have lost God by how much you are dividing. It always goes back to building. So we go now to Moses. Now, I need to read some scriptures for you. I see some of you are looking at me. Let me, let me go to the Bible. Now remember that the Old Testament is the building block for the New Testament. 
When God met Moses, now in Exodus 25, he told him, I want let them make me a sanctuary. Bro, let me open in my Bible. Exodus 25. If you're with me, say preach to me. Come on, say my pastor. Come on. Okay. Exodus 25. And the Lord spake, verse 1, to Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they will bring me an offering. Of every man that giveth it willingly. With his heart, you shall take my offering. Somebody read it? Mm -hmm. yes. You shall take my offering. Verse number three. And this is the offering you'll give me. Gold, silver, brass, blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, uh, rams, hair, verse six, oil, verse seven, onyx. Now read verse eight. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Verse 8. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Bring an offering. Let's build a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. This is the will of God concerning your life. Now in the New Testament, because yep. I can see my time may not allow me to put this together, but watch this now. In the New Testament, we are not bringing offerings, we are bringing ourselves. We are bringing ourselves so that we might be built into a sanctuary and that God may dwell on the inside of us. Now the reason we bring offertory to the church is so that we may build a physical house that is a reflection of the spiritual house. Lord help me here now. So he says verse 9 according to all that I will show you underline this in your Bible this is key now he says after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof even so shall you make it wait a minute I don't want you to miss this where's the man reading in Kirundi where's, where's? Read, read verse number 9 verse 9 so God is building, but He has a pattern after which He builds. But the building cannot determine what it will look like. The pattern is of God. So you cannot decide what the building shall be. Your job is to receive the pattern of the spirit after which you are being built. What the enemy does is he tells you what you want and then you ask God for what you want. But God is not building after what you want. God is building according to his own pattern. So our lives are about how well we follow the pattern. Because you're not the builder, you are the building. I'm, I'm not talking to somebody here. You're not the builder, you're the building. 
It is not your life. It is his life. Those are not your children. They are his children. That's not your job. It's his job. This is not your church. It's his church. And he has a pattern because he has a purpose. Now, in the Old Testament, praying the Holy Ghost, otherwise, you'll miss everything I'm saying. So, the Old Testament. Uh, Clovis, stand over there. Uh, 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 Michael, stand over here. All right. So the Old Testament becomes a picture of the New Testament. Now, 1 Corinthians 15 will say, let me, let me read it here for you. I have scriptures in my head, but I, I, I want you to write these ones down. So 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45, 40, the whole of 1 Corinthians 15, come on now. Yeah. Now, verse 46, he says, How be it? 46. Read it. Mm -hmm. Say it again. 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 Are we together now? So this is the spiritual house that God is building. This is the natural house that God is building. Now God is saying, it is not the spiritual that comes first. It is the natural that comes first. So if you don't understand the natural, you will not understand the spiritual. If you don't see what he's building in the natural, you will not understand what he's building in the spiritual. Because God creates Adam before he sends Jesus. If he had sent Jesus in the Old Testament, we would not understand. So he's, he makes Adam as the first Adam so that we understand Christ as the last Adam. Now God is not building Adam. No, he's building the last Adam, Christ. But he's using the first Adam for us to understand the last Adam. So our eyes are seeing natural but God is building spiritual. So we are here naturally but he's building something spiritually. If you see me naturally, you will miss who I am spiritually. Because I am being built into a spiritual house even though I am a natural man. So now in the Old Testament, yeah, come, come in, he begins by building the sanctuary. And the sanctuary, he puts in the, he tells Moses, according to this pattern. He gives him the blueprint that he will use to build. So Moses is not wise. Moses can see. God doesn't call us to, to kind of figure out something. He calls us to open our eyes. Because the plan already exists. Spiritual understanding is the ability of the spirit of a man to download the plan of God for his life. And I pray grace over you in the name of Jesus. Not for money. Ah, I pray for you. That God will give you the spirit like Moses. Where you build on the earth. 
What God is building in the heavens. This is what the Lord's prayer is about. Let your will be done on earth. As it is done in heaven. We are sent on the earth. To build on the earth. What God is building in the heaven. Who is in this house? So he begins with Moses. So Moses makes what we call the tent of meeting. Yes, in our time. I, I don't know if Burundi, mm -hmm. Burundi huh? 60 seconds is not one minute. You guys have like 40 seconds per minute. But let's go. He begins with what he calls the tent of meeting. Remember the tent of meeting? It has the outer court. It has the inner court. It has the holy of holies. And he tells him, build it according to pattern. But you must understand, it's not about the tent of meeting. It's about the spiritual house. Moses builds according to pattern. They begin to worship. The priest comes in once a year. People bringing sacrifices for their sins. But that's not what God was after. God was waiting for a time when outer court, inner court, and holy of holies will represent a spiritual house. And of course, already that reflects body, soul, and spirit. Outer court is your body. Uh, Inner court is your soul. Holy of holies is your spirit. Sin could not go into the holy place. Lord, help me out in here. The crowd only stopped at body. They could not get to spirit. I'm all alone in this house. So God has built you in such a way that the real sacrifices are not what you do in the outer court. In your body, your good voice is outer court. But do you have good spirit? Because that's where the sacrifices happen. God is not looking at what we are doing outside. He's looking at what's happening inside. Because he built you this way. But the thing is, he said so that I may dwell with them. Let me go to the end and come back. The sole reason the only reason why God builds a man is so that he may dwell in him. Listen, not so that he may use him, so that he may dwell in him. Our ultimate function is to be carriers of the presence of God. The only reason we are here is to be carriers of the presence of God. Now watch this. Once you are a carrier, he can use you anywhere at any time. But you're not being built to be used. You're being built to be a carrier. Hallelujah. In fact, the enemy can allow you to be used but not to be inhabited. Mm. Mm. You see, it is what is in a house that determines what the house shall be called. This is a church because you guys have come for service. But if we bring x-ray machines, blood pressure machines, if we bring 
machines in here to test, uh, uh, you know, your blood level. We, we, have, we have medicines in this corner. We have uh, an admission room on this. What does this place become? It's no longer a church. It's a hospital. If we bring in sodas, we, we bring in mandazi, we bring in food, what does it become? It has become a restaurant. Now this house does not determine what it shall be called. But what is in it determines what it shall be called. So we have many people who give themselves titles but but don't carry what they say they are. Let's go back. Then we had him build what they call the Ark of the Covenant. And the Bible says that whenever the Ark was with the children of Israel, they always defeated their enemies. But you see, what he's actually saying is our victory is not in how we fight. Our victory is in whether or not we are carriers of what we were born to carry. It is, it is, it is what you carry that becomes the greater one in you than the one that is in the world. There's a time when the enemies took the Ark of the Covenant. How many are with me here? Come on, are you with me now? The Bible says it ended up in the house of Obed Adam. And the Bible says his house was blessed. Do you know why? Because the ark represented the blessing. He did not pray for the blessing. The blessing knows what house it should bless. But you see, what he's telling us what he is telling us is that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We see we see David. No, that one we must read. Let's read David here. Come on, let's go to the Bible. How many are flowing with me? Remember, I, I want to go to the New Testament because that's where the good news is. But let's, let's get this old covenant for a minute. Second Samuel chapter number 7. Everybody, Second Samuel chapter number 7. Uh-huh. Read from verse number 5. Somebody pray in the spirit. Help me out in here. I'm working something. I can't hear anybody. Come on, pray with me. Uh, now, now, actually, uh, you, you will read it. Huh? Let me read it first because of time. Verse 1, it says, It came to pass the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest. This is David. God had given him rest round about all his enemies. That the king said unto Nathan, the prophet, David said to Nathan, you see, I dwell in a house of cedar. But the ark of God dwells within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, go and do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. you see, now, most of you are praying for peace all around you. David got to the place where he had all the money. He had no enemies. Everything is working well. But there was, some, there was something in his spirit that caused him not to be at rest. The first thing that came up in him was that mm, I have the cars. I have the money. I have the kingdom. But the ark 
of the covenant is dwelling in tents. But I am dwelling in a hut or in a flat and in a nice house. Because David was not born just to be rich. He was born to, so to be a carrier of the presence of God. Whenever the presence of God leaves a church, that church should just be closed because it's not about how many we have it's about what we carry do we carry this thing or do we just talk about it now David is at rest then the Lord begins how many of you are here you have seen life. You have seen things. Maybe you've even traveled. But there's an emptiness in your spirit. Let me see your hand. Let me. Lord, help me, help me. I'm looking for you. You've seen some things. But you sense a hunger. You say, where I am is not where I'm supposed to be. I'm looking for the church in here. There is something the Lord is starting. He's starting on the inside of you. Because ultimately, what God is building will be the measure of success. So David said, I wish I could say this. Watch this now. David is at rest and then he begins to build. Hebrews 4. He says, do everything you can to enter into God's rest. Because when you enter into God's rest, you begin to build the house of God. We will come to you in a minute. So David in verse number three, four, he said it came to pass that night. Oh Lord, that night, as soon as David carried in his spirit the functions of his spirit, that night, the Bible says the word of the Lord, the, watch this now, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, go and tell David, you will build me a house. No, shall you build me a house for me to dwell in? He says, verse 6, I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. Do you see the things that pain God? I'm all alone in this house. Since the day I brought them out, now, we pray for the Lord to bring us out of Egypt, but we don't know why he's bringing us out of Egypt. He brings you out of Egypt because he cannot build his house in a strange land. Will you build me a house? I have not dwelt in any house. Watch this. God is looking for a house in Bujumbura. Since the day I brought the children out of Egypt up to today, I walked in a tent, I walked in a tabernacle. In all the places I've walked with them, I spoke the word to them. I fed them. But why don't you build me a house? I've given you money. I've given you friends. I've given you a family. I've given you children. Why don't you build me a house? Because the functions of a man is to be a spiritual house where God will dwell. Don't worry, in my last 10 minutes I'll explain how that is going to happen. Now David began to collect things. He shopped ready to build a house. But watch this now. David did not build a house. 
God came back to him. And he told him in 1 Kings 5 and 2. 1 Kings 5 2. Solomon. 1 Kings 5 2. Flow with me now. He says, Thou knowest how that David my father could not build a house in the name of the Lord, for the wars were which were about him on every side until the Lord put under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord God has given me rest, this is Solomon, so that there is neither adversary nor evil occurrence. And behold, verse 5, I purpose to build a house in the name of the Lord my God. As the Lord said to David my father, now he is saying to me, Thy son will build me a house. Nuko Salomo atuma ku Israelamu uturazi ko se Dawidi atabonye ubuje bwo kubaka ingoro y'izina y'Uhora Imana yiwe kubwa intambara z'abansi biwe zari zimuturutse ijya nino uti gushisa aho uhora aho yabashiriye munsi y'ibirenge vyiwe utari ko we uhora Imana yiwe amuhaye impore impande zose uti nta mugwanizi nanaga kakaza uti none afisi migawe yo kubaka ingoro y'izina y'Uhora aho Imana yiwe uti nkuko uhora aho yabariye se wiwe Dawidi ati umwana wawe nzosubiza ku ngoma yawe niwe azonyubakira ingoro y'izina ryaje so watch this now. We see David desiring to build a house. But it is his son Solomon who ended up building the house. Stay with me now. But David is a picture of Christ. Christ came as the seed of David. So Christ in David collected all the materials that are necessary for the building of the house. But it is his son Solomon that used what David collected so that he might build a house for God. So on the cross, if, if, he said it is finished. I have collected Maladazo all the materials that are needed for the building of the spiritual house. Because after Christ, men now gather. They gather the materials that God has given them and begin to build for God a spiritual house. But they don't do it as labor, they do it from rest. Now you are the house that David was trying to build. That Solomon was trying to build. Now let's go to the New Testament. Are you ready? Lord help us here. Wave to me if you're here. Now, because I want to take you to the place where it's going to be important for you to understand that your parts of life your journey of life is determined by your, bu by your build up. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter number two. You, you, you can oh no, stay. your young men stay with me. Now I'm, I'm over on that side. Somebody say praise the Lord. Talk to me, say praise the Lord. First Peter chapter number two. I'm now in verse number five. And the Bible says, You also in the same time were taught of him that is the head of all men. You also are lively stones. Ay, 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 ay. You are lively stones that are being built into a spiritual house. A holy priesthood. 
to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You are a spiritual house that is being built up to offer spiritual sacrifices. Now our problem is we want to offer spiritual sacrifices before we are a spiritual house. God is saying if you are a spiritual house you will offer up spiritual sacrifices. So everything we see in the Old Testament is being perfected in the New Testament as a spiritual house. Now let's move together. How is this house being built? Ephesians chapter number 2 verse number 20 he says now therefore verse 19 how many are with me? I don't want to leave anybody. How many are with me? Wave. Okay, the people here have left me. Are you here? Wave to me. I'm taking you somewhere now. Ephesians 2.19 Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners but you are fellow citizens with the saints and with the household of God and you are being built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone watch this in whom the whole building is fitly framed together and it is growing into a holy temple in the Lord in whom also you are being built together for one purpose that you may be a habitation of God through the Spirit. So the only reason I'm alive is because God wants to build a house in whom he can dwell by his spirit and if he, I can become the habitation of God then I can become God on the earth because now wherever I go I'm a carrier of the very presence of God and I don't determine what I will do but what I carry will determine what I do. I'm about to help somebody here. And this is going to just flip all your theology for a minute. That man is not on the earth to please God. Man is on the earth to be a house of God. Man is not on the earth to be a, a to desire some things in life. And that's where the enemy gets us. He causes us to dwell on what we want rather than on what God is doing. So when Christ comes, he comes and releases a mystery. Now you pick me. He stops talking about the temple. He, you know, these guys come. They say, David built. Solomon built. Our father, Moses built. They are trying to teach Jesus about the Old Testament. They don't know that Jesus has come to fulfill the Old Testament. So he's telling them, he goes into the temple and he says, my house shall be called 
Hizo. A house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. Now, he thinks he th they think he's talking about the house, the building. But he's talking about the house, the body. So he's saying this body will be a house of prayer. But what is a house of prayer? It is a house that speaks a language better, better than the owner of the house itself. My house shall be called a house of prayer. It doesn't mean that the house will be praying. No, no, no. The house itself is prayer. We, we are not designed to try and pray to God. When you become what God has called you to be, your very essence is, pray is praying to God. You know, you're like a child. Now I feel like preaching. You know, your children don't know how to speak. They don't know how to ask. But because they are your children, they are telling you take me to school without telling you to take me to school they are telling you I must eat tonight without telling you buy food because they are your children so their essence prays to you you look at them and you know it's time to buy new clothes. They don't tell you. You know. Because you're their parent. Now when you become the house. The house prays to God. My house. Will be called a house of prayer. But you have made it. A den of thieves. Now. The character of a thief is trying to take what is not theirs. Any house that wants what is not theirs has become a thief. So some of our prayers are theft. We want God to give us what the house is not supposed to be. So forget trying to learn how to pray and learn how to become a house. What was I born to carry? He looked at them. <laughs> and they say, you know, we worship on the mountain. Because Moses came from the mountain and told them what to do. Others said, we worship in Jerusalem. Because that is where the house is. He said, what? Uh -uh. A time has come. And now has come. Where the true worshippers and not according to David, <inaudible> Solomon, <inaudible> Moses. A time is coming where my worshippers worship in spirit and in truth. Listen. Now to worship in spirit is only possible if, if you are spirit. So he's saying, my spiritual house is the worship I receive. Truth is not what you say it is. Truth is the reality of spirit. Hello? A chair is truth when you sit on it. It is a lie when you step on it. It is a lie when you step on it. 
Because it was born to be a chair. That's the truth of that chair. Worshipping God is when I am a chair and people are sitting on me. That is worship. I have no agenda of my own. I was built for something. I, I am not a chair asking to be a ladder. I'm a chair. And the worship God receives from me is when I am what I was born to be. Who is listening to me here? They came to Jesus and they told him, no, no, this is Jesus. He said, Break this house down. And in three days, I will build it up. Because Jesus came to build. The problem is, he's not building something physical. But 90% of the churches in Africa, no, in the world, are building physical. That's why the enemy has no problem with churches. Ah, he has no, no problem. Plant more churches. He has a problem when these physical structures become spiritual movements. He has a problem when life center is not in Nyakabiga. He has a problem when all of you become life centers everywhere you go. You're now a spiritual carrier. Cars don't stay at the petrol station. They come to drink so that they can go somewhere. You don't go to a church. You are the church. Break it down in three days. You see, your senior pastor is Pastor Mark. That's okay. But let me tell you, your real senior pastor is the pastor Mark you carry away from here. Did you get what I said? There are things he says. If I carry them home, then he is my senior pastor. Because we are not in physical stuff here. We are men of the spirit. Do, I have to go somewhere. Break this body. In, in three days. I will build it up. Then the Bible helps us understand. Watch this now. That he was talking about. His body. So the temple. Now is a new mystery. It's the body. Mm. So the body physical is a reflection of the house spiritual. So now we know why he gave you a head. Why he gave you hands. Why he gave you legs. It was not so that you walk on the earth. It is a reflection of what you were born to do in the spirit. Ah, uh, yeah. Now I'm going deeper. So Christ presents the mystery of the body. That the body is not what we see. The body is what it represents. He says, I am the head. Of the body. <laughs> Why the head? Because the body only responds. To what the head understands. And what the head translates. Before the body can move. The brain must say move. Where is the problem? 
We have bodies who are their own heads. The body comes to pray. But doesn't know what the head is praying. So the, the hand wants something to do. But the head has said nothing to the hand. Your prayer life is designed on your body. I want to go somewhere. I want to have something. But the head is Christ. And you are a spiritual house that receives instruction from the head. Bless my hands. No, no, no. The blessing is from the head. Do you know that every time you see something natural to be spiritual is to be able to see spirit in natural. And today there's a grace in this house. Lord, help me out here today. That is going to cause you to be a spiritual house that offers up spiritual sacrifices to God holy and acceptable to God please listen to me because every part of the body is a slave to the brain let me talk about the mystery of the body watch this now he says we are the body of Christ. Then he says, we have, we have the mind of Christ. Then he says, we are joined to him and we are one spirit with Christ. You missed the good news. Let me, let me try this again. You see your natural body? You are body, soul, spirit. But he's saying you are not body, soul, spirit. He's saying you are body of Christ. You have mind of Christ. And you are one spirit with Christ. Lord, help me out in here. So now, it's no longer even about how well I process. Because my brain is only a picture of the mind of Christ. I release grace over the house tonight in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 2, let's conclude this. I, I believe I'm flying over some uh, people here. Yes. Okay. How many are with me here? Wait Wait to me. Wait. Are, you, are you with me now? So God's ultimate purpose is to build a spiritual house. That's why we pray in the spirit. Jude 1, 20. Jude 1, 20. It says, building yourselves up in your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost you know why? because the more I pray the more I build myself in my most holy faith Ephesians 2.20 how do we I have five minutes stay with me how do I build the spiritual house two things Ephesians 2.20 we are being built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets what is this foundation it means that your house Looks like your apostolic and your prophetic foundations. Mm. Should, should I go there? I said, should I go there? 
Don't worry, this is the end. Don't worry. Try, JJ. You know, sometimes you go to hospital, they give you too many drugs. You say, I'm not taking any more drugs. But let me explain these two things. The foundation of the apostle is what we call the measure of word that is in your spirit. The foundation of the prophets is the measure of spirit that is in you. So the two blocks that make you a spiritual house is your measure of word and your measure of spirit. Whenever the church exalts the word, they have exalted the apostolic foundation. But you see, I have noticed that the word is not just the problem. The problem is spirit. And yet that is the prophetic foundation. Watch this now. Understand that in our days we have too many prophets. In Burundi alone there are enough prophets for Africa. But understand it is a picture of what God is building. Don't concentrate on the prophet outside. Focus on the prophet that's being built inside. Because the prophetic foundation is what gives you the ability to interpret the times of the apostolic word. Now this house that we are looking at here is in fact a spiritual house where God is raising an apostolic standard. Lord help me out here today. And the Lord is raising a spiritual prophetic standard so that together we have a man in this house that has become a spiritual house. On one side, you know what God said. On another side, you know what God is saying. On one side, you have a word of God. On another side, you're a carrier of the spirit of God. On one side, you have the gospel. On another side, you have the Holy Spirit. When Jesus came, this is what he said. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Do you know what he said? I will build a body that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But how will I build the body? I will give them the words and I will send them the spirit. The word becomes the gospel. What God is saying, the spirit becomes the interpretation of what God is saying. The word is apostolic because it establishes you. The spirit is prophetic because it shows you what you were built to do. The word will never tell you what you were born to do. You can read the Bible and you will never find your name in the Bible. And you will never know what house you were born to be. But the word gives you a foundation so that the spirit can now interpret what the word is saying. Now when it interprets, it puts your name 
in the word that did not have your name you are a spiritual house watch this now if you don't become a spiritual house for God you will become a spiritual house for the devil the devil attacks by an apostolic and a prophetic weapon he will, gi he will give you a word to believe and he will put you under a spirit. What we call a curse is when the spirit of the enemy is working in the life of a man because of the word that the man received. But he says if you receive the truth which is the word it will set you free from the spirit because gospel must always work with spirit. He said in John 17, I have given them your word. But it was not enough until Acts chapter number 2 when he said, now send the spirit. Because God builds by word and spirit. In Genesis, he said in Genesis, let there be and there was, but it is only after he brought spirit that what he had made by his word began to be activated by the spirit. Now all of you that are here You love the word You come and listen to the word You quote the word Your foundation is okay But you need spirit So that the word That you receive Will be interpreted Into your spirit The spiritual house Is different from the natural house The natural house House has stones. The spiritual house has word. And the word is built by the spirit. In the Old Testament, the dry bones, he called them together. They came together. But it is only when the spirit of God came on these bones that they became soldiers. They became a great army. All of you that are here, the word in your spirit is waiting for the visitation of the Holy Ghost to activate what you carry. And listen, and your ultimate function is to be a carrier of the Spirit of God on the inside of you. He will speak for you. He will direct your path. He will interpret your functions because you have already been built as a body. But now you need to be filled with his Spirit so that this spiritual house will begin to function. I pray grace over this house today. You better pray with me now. I'm done. You better pray with me now. I'm praying that this house will be a house which we call the spiritual house. It is not made up of members. Church is not just about you being a member. It's about you functioning. The mystery of the body. Come here. Let's finish. Is this. Look here. This hand is useless if it is just a hand. To be a member of the body means that this hand helps this body to do what the leg cannot do. So you're being built as a house. But as a member of this house, you don't just attend service. You function. You, you're the reason why this house is able to do some things. 
I'm speaking apostolically. We have too many members, but very few functioning parts. But it is by the Spirit of God that the hand begins to move, the leg begins to move, the body begins to function. And that's the grace I came with today. That the Lord will build you into a spiritual house. Now stand up, let me speak to you. Come on, stand up, let me speak to your spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I said pray in the Spirit. Come on, pray. Spiritual house, pray. Give me two minutes, let me speak to you now. You were born. In fact, lift your hands. You were born to be a house. 1 Corinthians 3 9, lift your hands. Says you are God's building. Everybody say with me, I am God's building. Mm, I can't hear you. Say, I am God's building. Say it, let me hear you. I am God's building. I am God's spiritual house. God is building me into a habitation, into a house that he can dwell. Lift your hands. Now because you have said those words, Watch this. God is going to fill you. Lift, 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 lift. Lift your hands. Listen, you're not going to move in the natural realm. You will move in the spiritual realm. There are spiritual gifts that the Lord is building in you. Lift your hand. The Lord is building some spiritual gifts. And that shall become the name of that house. I'm seeing all over this place spiritual gifts being lifted. The Lord is building for some of you a sensitivity in the spirit. Because you're going to become a discerner of spirits. For some of you, the Lord is building an appetite for His Word. Because you're going to teach the nations the Word of God. Where are the people I'm talking to somebody here? Some of you, the Lord is giving you a hunger for truth. Because he's building an apostle out of you. He's building an apostle out of you. For some of you, the Lord is giving you a hunger for souls. Because there's an evangelist that begins to come out of you. Who am I talking to if I'm lift your hands and receive? It's not about you. It's about what God is building in you. You are a spiritual house. Lift your hand. Your children have a spiritual house. Anybody that comes to you will have come to a spiritual house. The Lord is causing you to be one that will feed others. Lift your hands. You are a spiritual house. I only have one minute. Please, please receive. Come on. Please receive now. Lift your hands. I see in the spirit that the Lord will cause you to know what house you are. You are a spiritual house. Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. 
The righteous run to it and they are saved. Listen, people are going to run to you. Uh, because you have become a strong tower. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. May the Lord make this house a spiritual house. Now my last minute, I want us to pray for Life Center. Because I feel in the spirit the Lord is building a spiritual house here. Now all of you that love this church I want you to lift your hands and pray. Lord, make our church a spiritual house. Come on, come on everybody. Come on, come on, come on. Lord, make this a spiritual house. People who are looking for spiritual definition, they will find their answers in this house. People who are looking for spiritual food, they will find it in this house. People that are looking for spiritual impartation, they will find it in this house. Now lift your hands and let's thank God. Father, we thank you for today. Amen. We thank you for your word that comes from. Like you built in the Old Testament. Lord, build today in the name of Jesus. Let's see what you're building in Africa. Let's see what you're building in Burundi. Let's see what you're building in Bujumbura. And use us, God, to be a part of what you're building. Pray in the spirit and give him praise. Come on, pray in the spirit and give him praise. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, church. Come on, church. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Oh, we call Papa, we call him Murikino Guton, we call him Murimis, we call him Murikino Gie, we call him Murino Saison, oh, Mugiru Timana, we call him Man, we call him Man, we forget Raya Majamogus, we forget what we call him Man, the Kishi Munus, and if we call him Man, we call him Man, the Katkum Vikanano and Batimana, we call him Man, we call him Man, Uba Kaman, Uba Kaman, Uba Kaman, Uba Kaman, Uba Kaman, oh, Shitaman, Uba Kizon Gabire, Uba Kaman, Hallelujah. Uba kugoruge, uba kichogi kogwa, uba kizongabire. Hallelujah, uba kamani kinu gisha shabri jewe, kori kinu gisha shabri jewe. Chuwa kie kuchufuga, chuwa kie kuri mhemo awe. Hallelujah, tura kushime mana muri kilo gitondo, tura kushime kuisha mbaya awe, tura kushime kuisha mbaya awe mana, tura kushime kuisha mbaya awe muri kilo gitondo, tura kushime mana kumaja mbatu giwe, tura kushime kuchufuze mana. Amen. Amen.